represent. <laughs>
and my one will be from here to there. This would be y1. So don't forget that y, okay, is the distance from the Reshman plane to the centroid position. Okay, so we're doing some quick revision here. Okay, so we're going to look at segment one first. Okay, so the value of i, so y1, that'll be equal to what? So that'll be the distance of or the length of segment two plus half of segment one. Okay. So it will be 40 plus half of 10 or half the thickness of the flange. So that will be 40 plus half of 10. And that would be equal to 45 millimeters. So we've calculated y, yi. So the distance from uh, the neutral, uh, from the reference plane to the neutral axis of segment one. So hopefully we're all following that. So once we've done that, we now need to calculate the area of segment one. So that's just simple, you know, uh, calculation of um, a rectangle. So in terms of this, the length is 60 and the thickness is 10. So the area, so that'll be length times thickness, that'll be equal to 60 times 10, and that equates to 600 millimeters squared. Okay, so we've got that information regarding segment one. So we're now going to look at segment two. So the first bit, we need to know what the distance is from the reference axis to the centroid of segment two. So we've got this y2 and that's equal to. So what information do we have? So that will be half of 40. So this would be 40 over two and that gives 20 millimeters okay so this is 45 and this is 20 millimeters okay so here we go and to calculate the area let's call that a2 that'll be equal to l times t so what will be the length of that so that would be 40 times this distance there. So the thickness will be equal to what? The difference between 35 and 25. So this is also equal to 10. So this would be equal to 40 times 10. And this gives 400 millimeters squared. So we need to be very careful that we're not forgetting uh, units. Okay. So I'm going to just call reference this sheet one. All right, so hopefully that part is clear. So the next part is to now calculate the first moment. So calculating first moments. Okay, so for segment one. We had the following results. So what do we have? We know what the value of y is, then we know what the value of a is. So the product of the two will give us the q value. So the first moment, q1, is equal to y1 times a1. And that's equal to, so we've got a1 to be 45 times the area, and the area is given at 600. So if we do, they need a computation. So this would be 45 times 600. And that would give us 27,000. So this would be 27,000. And the units would be millimeter cube. Okay, 
And we do likewise for segment two. So the first area for segment two is equal to y2 times a2. Okay, so hopefully we're all following that. And that'll be equal to y2 was 20 times area two was 400, and that would give us 8,000 millimeters Q. What is the total area? So the total area of the section, so let's call that AT, which would be the sum of the individual areas, and that would be area one plus area two. So this would be equal to, so area one was 600 plus area two was 400, and that's equal to 1,000 millimeters squared. Okay, so we now have all the information we need to calculate for Y bar. So the centroid position, so we're looking at Y bar, that'll be equal to the sum of the first moments divided by the total area. So this would be equal to, so what do we calculate? So we have 27,000 plus 8,000 all divided by 1,000. Okay, so if you wanted to look at the unit, so this would be millimeters cubed over millimeters squared. So once they divide, you know that you're going to get the answer in millimeters. So do the little computation. So we've got 27,000 plus 8,000, and that would give 35 to the power of three divided by 1,000. So a power of three is a thousand, and that's a thousand that counts out, leaving 35 millimeters. So therefore, the centroid position of the T section will be in terms of x bar and y bar, this would be 30, 35 millimeters. And there we go. Okay, so hopefully that part is clear. Some quick revisions, so it's not as complicated as it seems. So where will 35 be? So that is 20, so it will be about there. Okay, so this would be the centroid of the form. I'm going to put in the neutral axis in the diagram. Okay, and we're going to call that X1, X1, or if you want to, just, you can just call it the neutral axis, NA, if you want to. Okay, so hopefully that part is clear. So for us to calculate the second moment of error for each segment, we need to know what this distance is. So this distance from the neutral axis of the composite form to that of the individual segment. So I'm just going to call that H2. And the distance from the neutral axis to segment one, I want to call that H1. Okay, and that's H1. 
So we're now going to apply the parallel axis theorem. Okay. Bye, bye, bye.